This video has been made possible by the MPL. MPL is a fun online gaming platform that allows users to play games such as Fruit Shop, Solitaire, Bowling, and many more to win real cash prizes. I love playing the bingo game, so stay with me while I play. The excitement of playing bingo can now be had on your phone. The app makes it super easy to withdraw your money right into your PayPal account or even your bank. Click the link in the description to download MPL or get it on the App Store. For Android users, go onto their website mpl.us to download and start playing your favorite games while earning money at the same time. Sign up right now to get $5 put into your account, and if you refer a friend, you get up to $20. You can also win 50 k daily by competing and playing games on MPL. Choose your game and beat your competition. The U.S. soldier who fought off two waves of NVA while high on marijuana. The Vietnam War, 1970. Brave men need no particular time or place to show their courage. In battle, it's simply who they are and where they are, whether they're stone cold sober, fueled by adrenaline, or even high on marijuana. That was precisely the case with Sergeant Peter Lemon of the United States Army. On April 1, 1970, he helped defend his base against the attacking North Vietnamese soldiers, even though he was under the influence of marijuana. Lemon fought them with a machine gun, an assault rifle, hand grenades, and with his bare hands. He fought so hard and bravely that he was awarded the highest decoration that could be given to an American soldier, the Medal of Honor. The funny thing was, Peter Lemon had not even been born an American. He was actually born on June 5, 1950 in Toronto, Canada. His family background gave you an idea of what kind of material Peter was made of, though. All the men in his family had done their bit and had fought in whatever conflict they had been called up to participate in. However, it was in Michigan in the United States of America that he became a hardcore patriot. Peter's family moved to Alabaster, Michigan, where his father found a job when Peter was only two. The small town environment was full of extreme patriotism. His upbringing and the life he led gave rise to his carefree and fearless nature. At seven years old, he knew how to shoot a rifle and led a gang of the local neighborhood kids. Even at that age, Peter showed all of the qualities required to become a real-life soldier. When the Vietnam War started, anti-communist sentiment exploded in communities such as Alabaster, Michigan. Like most of his buddies, Peter too was eager to fight for his country, even though it meant he would do it thousands of miles from his home. He was only 18 when he enlisted on February 28, 1969. His first stop was Fort Knox, Kentucky, where he underwent basic infantry training. Even though it was only basic training, the program in Fort Knox was pretty tough. The drill instructors wanted to make sure that all of the recruits familiarized themselves with what was waiting for them in the jungles of Vietnam. Peter, however, loved it. Being a soldier was his dream, and now that he had got the opportunity to become one, he enjoyed it. He proved himself to be one of the best recruits, always ready to rise to the challenge and put 100% effort into it. The instructors who assigned him as a squad leader recognized that potential in him. Peter Lemon was sent for the advanced infantry training in Fort Polk, Louisiana, straight from Fort Knox, where he completed the course as top of his class. Five months after he enlisted, on July 24, 1969, he left the United States of America for South Vietnam. Most of the soldiers on their first tour of duty in Vietnam were consumed with fear and uncertainty when they actually got there. Peter Lemon was not like that. He knew why he was there, and he was ready to fight. Unfortunately, his patriotic sentiment didn't last long, as the horrors of war soon took their toll on even him. The things he witnessed during his few months of combat dispelled any illusions he had that he was fighting a righteous war. He realized in Vietnam that they were fighting a bloody and futile war. The boy who had come eager to fight now just wanted to get back home in one piece. Lemon was not alone in his emotions towards war. In fact, many soldiers saw it the same way. They were all desperate to escape the depression that they had fallen into. The quickest and most accessible remedy was marijuana. In Vietnam, there was a lot of marijuana, and it was everywhere. Smoking pot made soldiers feel numb, which allowed them to carry the burden of war more easily. Peter Lemon was one of them. He too needed marijuana to ease his depression caused by the disappointment with everything that he used to believe in. 
In March 1970, Lemon's unit, E Company of the 2nd Battalion, 8th Cavalry, 1st Cavalry Division, was sent to the fire support base known as Illingworth in Tainan Province. The base was located five miles from the Cambodian border, overlooking a heavily used North Vietnamese Army logistical route. The primary task for the artillery units at Illingworth was to provide fire support to the patrols and reconnaissance teams along the route. However, the base had another, more dangerous role. It was being used as bait for the enemy units. Sitting on top of the hill in the middle of a jungle, Illingworth was supposed to lure out NVA troops into the open, where they would pose an easy target for American aerial attacks. The problem was the North Vietnamese had learned from their early mistakes and were well aware of the American tactic. As a result, they changed their strategy and attacked the base during the night when calling in air support would be of no use. It was precisely what happened on April 1, 1970, when the North Vietnamese made a night attack on the Illingworth base. On the evening before the attack, Sergeant Lemon and his men were assigned the duty of a support unit. A few minutes before midnight, the base commander, Lieutenant Colonel Michael John Conrad, raised the alarm when ground surveillance radar picked up the movement of a large formation in the jungle. Lemon's unit rushed out to their positions, only to find no one was coming out of the jungle. Lieutenant Colonel Conrad opened fire at the hidden enemy to let them know they were aware of their presence. The NVA did not respond and remained silent, so Lieutenant Colonel Conrad ordered the men to stand down and return to their beds. That was not an easy thing to do for Lemon and the rest of his company, knowing that the NVAs were somewhere out there ready to attack. To ease the tension, they took marijuana. Two hours and 17 minutes past midnight, the first North Vietnamese rocket hit the communication antenna. 400 NVAs attacked the base, which was defended by 220 American soldiers. The sound of explosions jerked Lemon out of his bunk. He was high on marijuana, but he knew he had to respond to the extreme danger that they were all in. The North Vietnamese soldiers were already swarming out of the jungle. Lemon rushed to his position, grabbed an M60 machine gun, and opened fire on the incoming enemy soldiers. Mortar rounds were exploding all over, and the air was alive with small arms fire. But Lemon kept raining fire down on the enemy. Once his M60 jammed, he continued to fight the enemy with his assault rifle. When the rifle jammed as well, he fought off the enemy with the rifle buttstock and his bare hands. Suddenly, Lemon was knocked to the ground by a powerful explosion coming from behind him. The North Vietnamese had hit the 40-ton pile of 8-inch artillery shells stacked in the middle of the base. For days, the soldiers had pleaded with their officers to let them dig in the ammunition stock, but the commander insisted that they not waste time on such things. The explosion was massive and injured many Americans as well as North Vietnamese soldiers. Lemon too was injured, but he paid no attention to it. He grabbed his buddy, took him to the first aid station, and then rushed back to his position with a bunch of hand grenades. As he was running back, he was injured again, this time by small arms fire. Nevertheless, he kept running, throwing grenades at the enemy and engaging in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Not even a third wound stopped him from fighting. He ran toward the nearest machine gun and opened fire against the NVAs, who were still coming out of the jungle. On top of the embankment, Lemon stood fully exposed and kept firing until he finally passed out. At 5 a.m., the North Vietnamese withdrew into the jungle. The base was intact. When Peter Lemon woke up in the first aid station, it was all over. He still insisted he was all right, but was eventually evacuated by helicopter. That day, the entire garrison of the Illingworth base had fought above and beyond the limits of courage. For their gallantry in action that day, men were awarded numerous awards, including dozens of Purple Hearts, several Silver Stars and Bronze Stars, two Distinguished Service Crosses, and one Medal of Honor. The last was awarded to Sergeant Peter C. Lemon. For decades afterwards, Lemon refused to wear his medal because he was so disgusted with the treatment that soldiers in combat got especially with the fact that the entire Illingworth artillery support base had been nothing more than just a decoy to lure the enemy out of the jungle. Only later, many years later, did Lemon start to wear his medal in memory of the brave men who had fought alongside him on that day. <laughs>